Hey what's up everybody this is Jonathan Lampel with Blender HD and in this video I'm going to be going over a super easy way that you can implement level of detail inside of Blender. So if you're not familiar with what that is it's simply the idea that you want things to be uh, more detailed the closer you are to them. So if the camera is really really far away you don't need that much detail because you're not going to see it anyway however when you're really close you do want to see that detail and the reason this is important especially in games is that when you have lots of objects, you only want to focus the detail on the ones that you actually need to see, while the other ones farther away, you don't really need all that detail for. So I'm going to show you a pretty exaggerated example, but it will give you a good foundation on how you can use this in your own workflow, and then you can go crazy and make it all complicated and mathy from there. So what we're going to do is we're just going to give Suzanne the monkey here a subdivision surface modifier. And this is going to be how she becomes more detailed is simply by increasing or decreasing the subdivision surfaces here. Now, maybe you already are starting with a really detailed model. You might want to use the decimate modifier or something like that. However, the value is, of course, going to be inverse, but you can get to that a little bit later. So this value is what essentially drives how detailed this is. And we need another value to drive that. For instance, the distance between the camera and the object. Makes sense, right? So we're just going to add a driver. And don't be scared by this, it's really easy. All you do is right click and add driver. Now I'm adding this to the view so it's not going to render out. If you want it to, you can do the same thing with the render. Uh, but I'm just going to split my view here, change this to the graph editor, and change the graph editor from F curve, which is your animation curves, to drivers. And now we have our driver information here. And if we press N, we can get our properties toolbar pop up. And uh, let's see, down here under drivers, here's where all the magic is going to happen. You have to make sure you have this one selected over here on the left, otherwise nothing's really going to show up. So when you have a driver, it's basically taking a value and spitting out another value. And that value is going to end up being this view uh, number of subdivisions right there. So right now, we're just using a scripted expression, and the expression is 2. If we change this to 1, the value is going to be 1. If we change this to 4, the value is going to be 4, and so on. So it's fairly simple. However, the reason this is cool is because we can add variables, and that's what we do down here. So right now the variable is a transform channel based on, so it's just going to spit out a value based on the object's x location, but we don't really want that. We want the distance between the two objects. And this is very simple, we just change the transform channel to distance, and now we can just select the camera and Suzanne, and this spits out a value right here, 7.101. And as we move Suzanne closer to the camera, we're going to get a smaller value. And as we move this farther away, we're going to get a higher value. This means that we want an inverse relationship between this value down here and what we get in the view. Because the higher the variable is, the lower we want our subdivisions. So say our variable is named there, which it is right now, you can change this to anything you want, say x like you would in regular algebra, if that's a little bit more familiar for you. Uh, now we can just plug in x. Now the problem is that, again, it's going to be more detailed the farther away it is, and we want the exact opposite of that. So to get that, we're going to divide by a number, and let's just say 10 divided by x. And now the farther away it is, the less detailed it's going to be as you can see right there, and as we bring it closer, the more detailed it's going to be. Now, you might run into a problem here where if you bring it too close to the camera, things might start slowing down. Maybe you want to put a limit on that detail because you don't want it going up to, say, you know, 7 or whatever. Also, if you want a little bit more uh, distance to play with, you can change this to a higher value, say 20, and now things are going to be a little bit smoother as you come close to the camera and it's going to take a larger distance into account. Okay, so say if I got this really, really close, you know, I want that to be less than six, right? I don't want it to be quite that smooth because it's really not necessary. So the way we can do that is with a modifier. So we can just add a modifier and limits, named pretty intuitively. So I'll drag this over so you can see a little bit better. Uh, over here on the left, we have our driver and you can see that there's a dot right here that represents the value. And you have this handy little dashed line going over to 6. And you can see that that 6 corresponds with the view number right there. As I pull this back, 
that changes to 3, this value also changes to 3, and so on. It's not changing to exactly 3, but the value is, is snapping to, um, is rounding down is what it's doing. Okay, so say I want to cap this at 5. Well, as I move this closer, you can see it's moving on the y-axis, so I can just set a maximum y of 5. Now as I move this back, it can go as low as it needs to. However, even if I move this extremely close, it's only going to stop at 5 and not go any higher. Now we can change this to anything we want, say 3 or whatever, and it's never going to be higher than that. You can also set a minimum if you'd like. So the cool thing about this is now I can, you know, say duplicate a whole bunch of Suzannes like that. And as I move the camera closer to them, they'll in increase their uh, subdivision level according to how close the camera is individually. So that's really, really nice, and it'll save you some render times or some geometry when you're working on a game. So thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.